Hi, welcome back to my lesson. This is page 5 of the textbook. So in this section, I'm going to share with you what is the accounting characteristic and their concept. So basically, accounting characteristic and concept, we can divide it into four categories. The first one is qualitative characteristic. So in this qualitative characteristic, we learn how to ensure high quality of accounting information so let's start the first one relevance so what relevance try to discuss accounting information must be relevant to the intended user for example do you need to record the information which is not in your business for example your competitor they buy 1000 item do you need to record in your business no because you only record the transaction that is relevant to your business if things are not relevant to your business you are not required to record and information must make sure that it is timeliness so you can use the timeliness information for the economic decision making next Accounting information must be reliable. So reliable, it means that you can trust the information. You can trust the information in the accounting. Accounting information must be free from material misstatement. What is material misstatement? It means that big error, big error, bias or misleading. So how to achieve reliability? You must completeness. It means that all the accounting information shall be recorded. You cannot choose, you cannot have preference on what kind of transaction you want to record or what kind of transaction you don't want to record. You cannot say that, oh, for profit transaction, I record. For loss transaction, I don't want to record. Can I do this? No, you are not allowed to have any bias when you record the transaction because when you have a bias, then the transaction is not reliable anymore. The account is not reliable anymore because you have preference, you have bias. Next one, verifiable. Accounting information can be verified. It means that the accounting information must be able to check, verify only when you can check then you can tell that this accounting information is in high reliability next one faithfully presentation the information should be able to tell the true story of the transaction or event and last one neutral the information is not subject to any bias next the qualitative characteristic comparability it means that you can compare the information you can compare the information user are able to compare the accounting information and draw a conclusion on the finding so possible types of comparison are current period compared to prior period for example this year performance compared to last year performance so from this comparison, you can tell that hey, this company is doing a better business this year or the performance is not good. So a good or a high quality accounting must be able to compare. Another type of comparison is actual result compared to the budget result. So we know for some company, you may set a budget. So budget is a guideline on whether uh, how come you how you want to achieve the business target. So for a good or high quality accounting, you must be able to do the comparison between your actual result and your budget. So next one, comparison of business entity financial performance with what competitor. So you want to know whether your company is doing the best, the best work in the entire market. What you can do, you will compare the company financial statement with others in the same industry. So we call competitor. So from that, you can understand that whether your company is doing a better job or your company is not doing well as compared to your competitor. 
Next one, understandability. Accounting information must be readily understandable. It means that a good quality accounting information must be able to understand by the user. Assume if the information you cannot understand, how you grab the information inside? So a good set of accounting must be able to understand. Next, we are going to discuss the boundary rules. So inside the boundary rules, we discuss what should and should not report. Boundary rule, the first one, entity. Business is a separate entity from the owner, regardless the form of business. So we can use a diagram to explain this. In the accounting, we have a very important concept called We have an important concept called NDT. So inside this concept, it say that owner and business is what is totally different. If the transaction is related to the owner you cannot record in the business. You are not allowed to do so. Let's, let's give an example. For example, today you are the owner. You have dinner with your family, for example, 100. So this 100 is with who? Family. So tell me, can this dinner expenses 100 become part of the company expenses? The answer is no. You are not allowed to recognize this 100 dinner as the expenses of the company. <coughs> Why? Because this expenses is the owner with the family. Is there anything related to the business? No, there is nothing related to the business. So according to NTT concept, if the transaction is not belongs to the business, we cannot record in the business account. Another example, let's say you also having dinner. You also spend 100, but this 100 is with customer. So question, can I record this 100 as an expenses of the business if the owner dinner with the customer? The answer is yes. You can recognize this 100 as an expenses in the company. Why? Because this 100 you spend with your customer is because you want to secure the order or it's because you want to expand your company business. So these expenses is related to the company. In this situation, we can recognize these expenses 100 as the company expenses because the company will be the beneficial owner for spending this money if the company is able to get this customer in future. Next concept, periodicity. The accounting information should be prepared on a regular basis. It means that timeliness. You cannot, for one year account, you spend three years to prepare. The account must be prepared on a regular basis. In general, the accounting period for a business is 12 months. So in general, the financial period for a company is 12 months or one year. So this financial period should be consistently applied and you cannot simply change without any reason. Imagine you simply change your financial period, change for 12 months to six months, or you change to eight months. If you simply change the financial period, then you will have a problem in comparability. Because if you use eight months compared with six months, six months can you get a comparative result? The answer is no. So 
a good accounting, you your accounting period must be consistently applied. Next one, going concern. So in this going concern, this concept assumes that the business entity can continue operate up to the foreseeable future. And this foreseeable future say that the account or the company can be survived in the next 12 months. Next, recording rules. So recording rules here we discuss how and when data should be recorded. First one, monetary measurement. Accounting information should only be recorded when it has a monetary value. Let me give you an example. Again, we assume you have a business. And one day, let's say your business short of people. You have uh, no enough manpower to help in the business. And so let's change the example. Let's say your family come to help you and of course because of family, your family did not ask any salary from you. So we can say that this help is FOC. So in this situation, should we record the FOC help in the accounting? Shall we record this in the accounting? The answer is no. We shall not record the free FOC service in the accounting. Why? Because there is no monetary value for the help of your family because you are not paying them anything. This is a FOC service from your family. So in the monetary measurement, only the inform only the transaction with a value you can only record in the account. If the transaction there is no monetary value, you can't record in your accounting. Next, historical cost. Historical cost mentioned that you should only record the original cost in your account. Next realization income and expenses shall be recorded when it is virtually certain or realized it means that when you only can confirm this is the company income or this is the company expenses you shall record when you cannot ascertain whether this is a company income or expenses you cannot record in the account next one accruals in the accrual concept income and expenses shall be recorded when it is earned or incurred whenever it is received or paid so when you earn the income or when you need to incur the expenses you shall record in the account regardless whether this is a receive or paid for example let's say this is a Renter. For example, this is December, this is January. So in December, you need to pay salary to your staff, let's say 3000 But you only make payment your staff on January I repeat the question December salary 3000 you only make payment in January so tell me for this salary 3000 I should record in December or I should record in January the answer is 
December because according to the accrual concept if your expenses is incurred in the month of December you shall record in the month of incurred rather than record on the payment and this situation similar to the income this is based on your earn rather than based on your receive next matching according to matching concept costs and expenses arising from the same revenue and income shall be recorded in the same accounting period it means that we know when you want to do business you must have cost and because of the cost you will have the same income in the business so according to the matching concept your revenue and your cost should be recorded in the same accounting period next one duality according to the duality concept every business transaction will have double entry which is debit and credit you will learn the double entry concept in chapter 2 and this is a very important concept in the accounting because when we prepare the account we follow the duality concept the double entry concept to prepare the account I will talk more on this double entry concept in chapter 2 next materiality accounting information shall be recorded when it is significant or important for the user if the information is not important or is not useful or significant to the user do you need to record according to the materiality concept you are not required to record because we only record significance and important information in the accounting for the user next ethical rules so in the ethical rules we dis discuss limit the room of manipulation of accounting information the first one prudence this concept indicates that you shall not be overstated expenses sorry you shall not overstate the income and your expenses shall not be understated this inspired that, that when you have a choice to select an accounting estimation or method select the one will result in lower profits example when you have method a and you have method b in the preparation of account method a give you higher profit method b give you a lower profit according to the prudence concept which method you shall select the answer is you shall select method b because method b will give you a lower profit that's why we call prudence it means that we don't overstep the income or don't overstep the profit of the company next consistency the selection of accounting policy accounting period and presentation in financial statement shall be consistently applied back to this example you cannot say that oh this year i want to use method a next year i try to use method b and third year I use method A again you cannot simply change your accounting method without a valid reason consistency it means that you shall apply one method consistently next objectivity no bias or favorism shall be used in the recording of information I think this we discussed in the reliability and there are other concepts in the accounting this concept we call substance overflow so let's have an example of the substance overflow so a typical example for substance overflow is higher purchase do you know higher purchase higher purchase means that you buy something you get bank to pay the amount first and you pay later a typical example for higher purchase is higher purchase for motor vehicle so assuming that 
you will buy a new model vehicle so this is the head with the light so this motor vehicle is 100,000 and you don't have this 100,000 at this moment what will you do? so you will ask the bank to help you pay the 100k first and what will you do? you will pay to bank by installment for example by by 84 installment or by uh, 108 installment so this arrangement we call what? this arrangement we call higher purchase arrangement I explain again you want to buy a motor vehicle for example 100,000 you are not able to make the full payment now so what will you do you will get a bank that help you pay the money first and you pay the money back to the bank by installment and of course bank will charge you interest this arrangement we call higher purchase arrangement so according to the uh, legal way before you settle all the installment this motor vehicle is belong to who? this motor vehicle is belongs to the bank according to the higher purchase, higher purchase arrangement you must fully settle the installment then this motor vehicle will become yours but in the accounting when you start buying this asset we will recognize this is a company asset why? because of the substance over form concept this concept in this case that a transaction shall be recorded based on its underlying commercial substance rather than the legal form typical example of substance over form concept is higher purchase higher purchase arrangement technically a higher purchase asset is belongs to bank before your full settlement <coughs> as such entity only hire the asset during the list term and the title of higher purchase asset only belongs to the entity after the full settlement however a higher purchase asset is, recon is recognized as the company asset during the commencement of list term this is because the company or the entity has enjoyed the majority economic benefit from the use of asset because you are the one to enjoy the benefit of using this motor vehicle bank is not enjoying any benefit of using this motor vehicle because you are the one using bank only charge you interest for this arrangement so in the substance form this asset you are the beneficial owner so this asset should recognize in the company account although according to the legal firm this asset is, is long to the so that's all for the part 2 in your chapter 1. If you have any question regarding this part, you can leave me a message or discuss in the LMS. So we will continue part 3 later.